Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. Thanks for coming and joining us today. Last week we started talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I warned you ahead of time that there's some division in the church uh, about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to try and convince you of anything. I'm here to just show you some scripture. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give revelation to the truth of the word. Amen. And so we're going to continue this uh, talk this week. Uh, but last week from Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it tells us that Jesus says, well, wait now in Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall receive power to be my witnesses. Okay? So the Holy Spirit comes, we receive power. Now, that's what we're talking about, but what's the power for? It's so that we can be good witnesses for him and, uh, and to him so that people see Christ in us. They actually look and see the life of Jesus Christ being lived out through you and I. Now, part of um, the power that happens is, is the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit and how he reveals and how he communicates with us, the church. It's amazing when you think about it because he's not a person that you and I can walk up and shake hands with. And yet he lives on the inside of us. We can have access to him every single day. But it's, it's not like I can just talk to him um, face to face. Okay, so spiritually when we're dealing with the Holy Spirit and, and having communication with him, it's different. So how do we communicate? Well, through several different mediums. For instance, the, the Word of God. The Word of God, the Holy Spirit will speak to us in a major way. Um, through dreams and, and uh, visions, the Holy Spirit will speak to us. Through prayer, the Holy Spirit will speak to us. Some people have heard an audible voice. I personally haven't yet, but there's many different ways that he does it. But this is all part of the power of the Holy Spirit as he communicates with you and I and gives us revelation to the Word of God. That's powerful, okay? Look with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse... Four. This is Paul, and he says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Once again, here's part of that power, how, how the Holy Spirit can speak through you and I. He speaks to you and I, and then speaks through you and I, and that is Paul telling us that. Look what it goes on to say. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So here, God is speaking to us a mystery that was hidden from us. But the Bible says it's for us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Alright? So here it's saying that these mysteries are for our glory. Now look at verse 10 and it says, But God has revealed them. Revealed what? He's revealed these mysteries to us. And look what it says. He's revealed these mysteries to us through His Spirit. When you talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, that's what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit can communicate with you and I. And he gives revelation to the Word as, as he communicates to you and I. What a power that's on the inside of us. Let's read on. But God has revealed the mysteries to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit, his Spirit, searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a God except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. All right, I'm not done. Let's read on. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 
And it says, but the natural man does not discern or does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, without the Holy Spirit in you and I, communicating with you and I the way he does through his word and, and these other things that I've told you, until we have the Holy Spirit in us, the power of the Holy Spirit so he can communicate with us, we can't figure out these mysteries that are ours that were laid up for us from the beginning of a time uh, for our glory. And yet here the Holy Spirit reveals them to you and I. I want you to know one more scripture. In 1 John chapter 5, and I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 2 verse 20, it says, You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Now how does that work? Well you have the Holy One, the Holy Spirit within you, and does he know all the things of God? Yes, he does. He is God. And he's on the inside of you, communicating with you. If you will recognize that power and begin to open up and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who glory to God. You talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want all that I can get from the Holy Spirit. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.